Hi, we're the Brew Dudes, and we got a great show for you today. Today we're going to do some home brewing. All right, so we're going to brew an IPA today, um, right at home, and uh, it's going to be a great time. Yeah, we were actually sort of inspired by the Berry Public uh, Hop Rod Rye we tasted recently, and we just decided to make our ingredients sort of similar to that by using a decent amount of rye. We're going to use two pounds of rye, one pound of crystal malt, and then uh, eight pounds of liquid malt extract. So, And then we're going to use a combination of Centennial and Cascade hops. This should be a great, huge IPA. It should give us a nice floral flavor, and it's supposed to end up somewhere between, somewhere around 8% alcohol, so it's a very big IPA, almost a double, but we're excited. So uh, we're going to take you step by step on how to brew your own beer. Okay. All right. The absolute most important thing of any home brewing is keeping things sanitized, and you can't have any bacteria, you cannot have any foreign yeast touching the beer, otherwise it'll give it an off flavor, and you do not want that. Yeah, so uh, in that effort, we started using this sanitizer. Yeah, it's a liquid sanitizer. We just fill a bathtub with water, throw everything in it, and then pour this in, stir it around a bit. Kills everything. The first thing we do after sanitizing all of our equipment is we're gonna steep the grains. Yep, we gotta prepare them for boil, so we're just gonna put all our grains in a pot of water and then also add a little... A gypsum? Bat, gypsum. And Two teaspoons worth. Yeah, then we'll take that water and we'll just bring it up to 170 degrees. We'll get all the sugars out of these grains and make them ready to boil. Uh, the grains we're using are two pounds of rye and then one pound of crystal malt. Malty. After we put in the grains, we're going to put in two uh, teaspoons of gypsum in order to harden up the water a little bit. So after adding the gypsum and the grains, we're going to stir it together um, and slowly heat it to 170. As you can see, the rye has turned this very red and it's getting up to near the temperature we want it to be. So we got it at 170 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, just the temperature we want. We're going to keep it there from three to five minutes, uh, stirring slowly and, and making sure that it doesn't go above 170. All right, now we've got to set our second, our large brewing pot right here. What we're doing now is it's full of about two gallons of water. We're bringing it up to the same temperature, 170 degrees, as our current mash is right now. And we're going to uh, add, the, add the sugar water from here into here, strain out the grains, and then we'll be good for the boil. So now we're going to use our sanitized scoop strainers in order to scoop out all the, all the grains, the specialty grains, and put them in this uh, holding container right here. Then we're going to put the liquid that is left over into the, into the big... Uh, Brewing kettle. So we took a big scoop of the grains out and are just letting it drain out. And now we're going to pour the remaining bits into the uh, scoop strainer right into our brew kettle. Right now I'm sparging the grains with some water. That means I'm pouring water over them and they're through a strainer so I'm getting all the sugars possible out of the grains. Now we're turning up the heat on our main brew pot and we're going to bring it up to a boil. So the water that we're left with after straining is really deep, dark red, and uh, we're now heating it up to 100 degrees Celsius, boiling temperature. The best ways to develop your beer palate is while you're home brewing to try your specialty malts. It really helps you uh, pick out a rye when you taste one. Mmm. Great. Right now I'm opening up our halo malt extracts here. They've been heating up in some warm water all, all the time, so the malt's going to come out of the can nice and easy. Now we're going to add our liquid pale malt extract to this. It's coming out nice and easy from the can. That's because we heated it up beforehand. It made it a little bit thinner, easier to handle. And you got to scrape it all out to get, make sure you get everything. So next, we stir in that pale malt we just added. It smells fantastic. One of the most satisfying aspects of home brewing is drinking a beer with some of the aspects that you want your beer to have while brewing it. So I'm going to be drinking a Centennial IPA while brewing with Centennial hops. One for you, and one for me. And one for you, and one for me. Well, our boil has started, and it's time for us to add our bittering hops. The timing on when you add the hops during the boil really affects the outcome of the beer. If you add them early on in the boil, they affect how the bitterness and the flavor. But if you add them late in the boil, they affect the aroma. So right now we're adding 1.5 ounces of Centennial hops and should be, give it a nice floral bitter, bitter flavor to it. Well, we have 12 minutes, 30 seconds left to go, and we're going to add more hops. Cascade hops, just like this Anchor Liberty Ale I'm drinking right now. They're gonna be delicious. 
Now's a good time to start preparing for the cold bath that you're going to put the, the hot wort in after it's done boiling. Um, you throw a bunch of salt in the water here to make the ice really activate and really make the wort chill down really fast. We're trying to get it down to, to room temperature as quickly as possible. So you're going to fill this full of ice and water and then it's going to really chill down the wort. It's going to really work well. Alright, now we're doing our final hop addition. These are aroma hops strictly. They will add a lot to the nose, but not a whole lot to flavor. So um, we're going to add a half an ounce of Centennial and a half an ounce of Cascade all at once. All right, so now we're going to transfer the hot wort right into the freezing cold water that I prepared earlier. So the key here is to keep stirring the cold water because um, a hot boundary layer builds up around the, the extremely hot pot and you must keep this cold water moving by it, otherwise it won't cool very fast. Make sure it cools down very quickly to 70 degrees, that's the temperature you want. So now we're going to siphon right into a strainer um, and clarify this beer as much as possible at this step. The next step before you, uh, before you throw the yeast is that you have to check the specific gravity of the beer. Um, to check and see how, how much sugar is actually dissolved in here. And um, we seem to have a specific gravity of 1.12. Alright, well we've loaded this thing up to a little over 5 gallons and now we are preparing to pitch the yeast. But before you pitch the yeast, you have to aerate it! Alright, we're going to be using a liquid yeast for our fermentation. And the important thing is here, it's got a little bit of a yeast bubble inside here. You have to break the bubble before you can pitch it. So you got to locate the bubble in the packet. There it is. And then you just hit it a bunch of times until the bubble breaks. All right. All right, after prepping the yeast, it's important to sanitize the bag of the yeast just to make sure it doesn't come into contact with anything. So we're going to put it in our sanitizing tub right here. we swirl it around and leave it there for about a minute. Once you've prepared and aerated the warts, uh, you got to pitch the yeast, just throw it on in. Last but not least, for the brewing day, you want to attach your fermentation lock, you stick it right in, and you want to fill your fermentation lock just barely above the sort of border of the middle part of it. That way, uh, there's plenty of room, because once it starts uh, fermenting, there's, it's going to be a lot of pressure coming out of this. All right, to end the day, you want to put your beer in a Nice, cool, dark place for it to ferment. So now that we have it in a cold, dark place, we just have to let the yeast do its thing. And in the meantime, happy drinking.